Today we're gonna see one of the few times that I think shooting through a door was the right decision. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host as always, John Korea. Today's is a great one. It comes to us from Karachi in Pakistan. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. I sped up the beginning here just another day at this shop. These guys are just doing business. And what you're gonna see here from the other angle from outside is four guys on two motos roll up. At least three of them are armed. And we're gonna see one armed guy, one unarmed guy come into the shop and announce a robbery. See the guy in the green there has a gun in his hand. The guy in the brown does not. And they're gonna announce a robbery. Now watch from the door behind them. We have actual audio of what goes down here from here because somebody behind that door is one of the defenders has a gun. If you were counting, the man from the inside there fired 14 rounds. Now you can see with the guy that got hit multiple times is kind of wandering off. A second guy shows up with a firearm as well, starts sending some rounds their way. And our first dude who took a bunch of rounds falls out in the street. Uh, they didn't get anything from these guys, according to the news story that I have linked in the description. Uh, that one dude took the asphalt temperature challenge, and it does not look to me like any good person was harmed, though there was a lot of lead flying here. Hey, we talk about the legalities of this stuff all the time on Active Self Protection Extra, our second YouTube channel in our series we call John's Briefs. That is also all on the Active Self Protection Unlimited app. If you're tired of ads on YouTube, tired of getting unsubscribed from the channel, tired of having to you know, verify your age 47 times and worried that they might take us down one day, hit the Asp Unlimited app link in the description and start your free trial. Join us over there. We would love to be able to interact with you off of YouTube. Now we're gonna talk, there's plenty of opportunities in this particular armed robbery for a counter ambush and even earlier, and I would recommend, don't just depend on somebody else, have your own firearm on your person. So you notice when these guys come in, our dude announces the armed robbery and then immediately looks out to see what's going on with his partners. Anybody that's standing in there right now, if they have a firearm and a 1.5 to two second draw to first shot, they can launch a counter ambush here, but you gotta take your turn, right? So we say wait your turn, but also take your turn. And that means you've gotta have your firearm on your person and you gotta know what your go signal is. That guy's got a gun and is threatening me with it. It's go time. Well, they don't have that here. So they've gotta wait. Now these guys start shaking them down and instead they comply fully. That's a second strategy. Compliance can be a strategy, though about 25% of the time, people who are fully compliant in armed robberies end up injured anyway. So it's not a foolproof strategy. Now then, our first shot comes through this door. And generally speaking, I'm gonna tell you, don't fire through doors. Don't fire because you cannot identify the threat. But this is one of those glass doors that has like a, you know, like a film on it. So it's almost like a, a two-way door where you can see through it one side and not through it on the other side. So as long as you can see, yes, that's the perp. Yes, that's our, our, our armed robber. Absolutely, you can use that and use it for an incredible counter ambush. Now that said, who do you want to hit? You want to hit the guy with the gun. You want to hit the guy in green before you want to hit the guy in brown because he's got the firearm on him. Now you got him a couple times. That guy's getting out. Okay, fine. I also want you to notice your buddy shows up here and, and opens the door. He almost shot him in the face. Hey, buddy, make sure you stay out of the way of the gunfire. Next, notice that our perp here has got at least a couple holes in his back. And I know some people are gonna wonder, wait a minute, what about shooting him in the back? Remember, it's not about where you shoot someone, it's about why. And why did he shoot this guy? He shot him because he was a deadly threat. And all four of those armed robbers that showed up are all equally a deadly threat. They all are in concert together. They all represent a threat, threat of death or great bodily harm to everyone in that shot. I have no idea, no, no problems whatsoever with them shooting this guy and hitting him in the back multiple times. Next thing I wanna pay attention to, our defender here, two hands on the gun and a pretty darn good shooting position here. And that's why he's getting hit. And you want to get hits. Hits are what end guns fights. Now that said, if you were counting, he fired 14 rounds in order to end this threat. Multiple armed attackers, armed robbery here, 14 rounds. And so some people are like, well, you know, you don't need more than 10 rounds as a self-defender. Hogwash, this one took 14 and even more than 14 to drive these guys off. And so again, 
If you're highly skilled in practice, maybe fewer than that, but that's not a requirement for the average private citizen. Again, we wanna have more rounds is more better, more opportunities to end the threat, though we wanna be judicious with those opportunities and not send bullets off into the wild blue yonder either. One thing I would say here, don't chase deadly threats. You've already chased these guys off, let them go. You know, you've broken contact, that's the win. Take the dang win. Now that said, on the other side, they have another good guy who shows up here who I don't know where he was in the original problem that's going on. I will say this, he shows up and starts shooting, but do you notice here that his eyes are at this level and his gun is way down here? So he is he's simply using a very coarse aiming technique here and kind of what we would normally call point shooting after these guys. I would strongly suggest instead when a target is more than two arm lengths away that you use those bumpy things on top of the gun, those sights, and get them up in your line of sight and use them effectively. Make sure you go take some firearms training for that. I'm not for the government mandating firearms training, but I am for every person who owns a firearm being trained and equipped with it with good formal training. Also, who should he be focused on? He should be focused on this guy over here. You notice the fact that he has a gun in his hand. Our dude who's running away and has been shot multiple times, okay, fine, he's already out of the fight and is running off. But this dude here with the motorcycle, he has a gun in his hand and is absolutely an imminent deadly threat. The other two dudes have jumped on their moto and they are off and running. If you forgot they left the, the, the oven on, so they are gone. But this guy is still a deadly threat. You gotta make sure that you open your vision up. We talk about that on the range sometimes, but you open your vision up enough to see where are the threats and you look for work to do. And that guy running away is probably not the work to do. The guy with the gun on the motorcycle is the work to do. Okay, fine. Now at some point, eventually you gotta stop. And I'm proud of these guys for reaching that point and then stopping. I will notice as well, when you are firing these rounds, this is why marksmanship is so important. Look at the backstop, everyone. It's a very, very busy backstop. And we always joke that if you miss, behind your target is gonna be a bus full of nuns and orphans. And that's why you wanna be judicious with your marksmanship. You certainly don't wanna send a desk pop up, up into the air like our dude here did at the end as a warning because that bullet's coming down somewhere, okay? That last bit was irresponsible and I would not recommend it. That said, they did stop, that's great. They go over to this guy, okay, fine, he's the armed robber. We're gonna be able to have a little bit of a potluck with that guy, but he's taking the asphalt temperature challenge and isn't a problem anymore. Anymore. Great job of getting a counter ambush here. More than 10 rounds for sure. 14 by one good guy, at least four or five by another. So again, capacity does matter. Make sure you get your hits to cover your ASP.